We're going to take a little trip into the past, present, and future of Southeast Asia's standalone movie theaters. But before I start that, I'll give you a brief definition of what a standalone movie theater is, because not everybody knows. Standalone movie theater, plain and simply, is a movie theater that stands alone. It's a structure which was not a part of any other kind of structure, not a shopping mall or anything else. It's the old-fashioned ki old kind of movie theater. With that in mind, I'm going to share with you a little quote. And that quote goes, people buy tickets to theaters, not movies. And that was a quote by Marcus Lowe. Marcus Lowe clearly believed his words. Marcus Lowe, as the founder of the Lowe's theater chain, built fantastic movie palaces throughout the United States during the 1920s. But I'm not here to talk to you about American movie palaces from the 1920s. That's for someone else to do. What I am here to talk to you about is mid-century standalone movie theaters in Southeast Asia. That's my expertise. Now, where I have lived in Thailand for most of the last 10 years, going to a movie almost invariably involves a trip to a shopping mall. And to the credit of the builders of the shopping mall, they created a convenient all-in-one consumer's paradise. I mean, think about it. You drive your car right into the secured parking lot, get out into a climate-controlled shop-to-you-drop paradise, have a cup of coffee, have a bite to eat, and then while you're at it, maybe go see a movie. From a business perspective, it's kind of genius. But I have to ask people of Southeast Asia, is that really what everyone wants, just shopping malls? There's so much more, and theaters among them. Let me turn back the clock, though, about seven years. Seven years ago, I was a graduate student at Chiang Mai University, getting a master's in sustainable development. One day, I'm riding my motorbike through the streets of Chiang Mai, and I take a roundabout way and chance upon a rustic, run-down, standalone movie theater tucked away in an alley. Being a newcomer to Thailand, finding the Tippinet Theater really opened my eyes. I had never known that such a type of building existed in the city, and I decided then and there that I was going to one day go and watch a movie at that theater. Unfortunately, I waited a little bit too long. By the time I got around to it, the theater was kaputski, torn down, wiped off the map. So with that in mind, with my interest peaked, I decided to research this kind of building, to research these venues. And what I discovered was that Thailand and the surrounding countries had a rich movie-going culture, characterized by charming, architecturally unique, standalone movie theaters located really throughout the country. I mean, these places were visually spectacles. If it wasn't the architecture alone which caught your eye, then it was the two- and three-story high hand-painted billboards, which truly lit up the streets. But more important than their visual aesthetic, these buildings served an extremely important social function. This is, this is where people came to meet. This is where they shared pleasures together. This is where they exchanged information with one another and got information from the movies they were watching. In fact, I would argue that aside from maybe the temple and the school, there was no more important social space than the movie theater. Now, with my interest peaked, I decided to dig a little bit further. So I invested in a camera, and I decided I would see for myself what was left of these structures. I started the Southeast Asia Movie Theater Project. My goal was to document as many of these buildings as I could find, to create a photographic archive of standalone movie theaters, and create, even further than that, a comprehensive cultural geography. To date, I've traveled across about half of Thailand, about half of Burma, and almost all of Laos, to, and documented over 200 theaters in various conditions. One of the many things I've learned while doing this, is that in Burma, a lot of these old theaters are still in operation, like this one, the Wind Cinema in Donggu. To see these places alive really gave, gave great context to those old photos I had been digging up. 
This woman here, she was the snack vendor at the Wynn Cinema you just saw. What you can't tell by this photograph is that her number one selling snack is sunflower seeds, as it is in almost all Burmese theaters. Can you imagine what it's like to be in a movie theater full of people eating sunflower seeds? You can't hear the movie for the first 20 minutes. And then when you leave, when you walk out of the theater, you're crunching across the floor over the shelves. But really, again, to see these places alive and in color, with life in them, really definitively told me that these were important community centers. They were local landmarks. And in some cases, they still are. Another aspect which really caught my attention was the people who were working at these theaters and their stories. This guy was the projectionist at a theater in Siseket province in northeast Thailand. The guy had been spinning movies here for 20 years. That's what I call company loyalty or employee loyalty. Or this man, the ticket taker at the Nakhon Non Rama, who'd been tearing tickets there for 30 years until they tore the building down last year. But truthfully, I gotta be honest, most of, most of what I've found is colorful abandonment. Architecturally unique, beautiful, standalone movie theaters throughout the country awaiting a brighter future. Truthfully, they're mostly just decaying. Sometimes they are being converted to other functions, and sometimes that function is parking lots. Usually, they're just in a state of ruin. But I believe, I firmly believe, that from these ruins lies the seed of regeneration. And without further ado, I'm going to show you a short film that I made, uh, whereby I interviewed the owner of an old movie theater in northern Thailand. หนังเรื่องแรกที่เข้ามาฉายวันเปิดโรงนี่ก็เรื่องซูเปอร์โซนิกแมนโรงหนังตะพันหินลามานี่สร้างมาในปี2522เปิดวันที่25ธันวา2522ถ้าเราจะพูดถึงความรู้สึกทางด้านแวะเกี่ยวกับโรงหนังตอนทำโรงหนังใหม่ๆเนี่ยเราจะรู้สึกเรามีความตื่นเต้นกับคนที่เขาเรามีความภูมิใจมากที่คนมาเยอะแยะเลยอะมาทั่วทุกสาธิตเต็มหน้าโรงไปหมดทั้งรถมอเตอร์ไซค์รถยนต์อะไรจอดเต็มหมดแล้วก็มาอย่างนี้ก็เราก็จะคอยเดินดูแลความเรียบร้อยแล้วก็เพราะมันมันมันสนุกมันตื่นเต้นอ่ะแล้วเวลานั่งดูเนี่ยคนหัวคนที่ดูคนเป็นพันพันหัวรอกพร้อมกันเนี่ยมันมันมีความรู้สึกยังไงนะฮะเราอยู่คุยกันในวงเล่าวงเล็กๆหัวสามสี่ห้าคนหัวรอกยังมีความสุขขนาดนั้นแล้วแต่คนเป็นพันพันคนหัวรอกพร้อมกันคุณคิดว่ามีความสุขขนาดไหนอย่างผมเนี่ยสมัยก่อนเนี่ยเราใช้ชีวิตเรามีความสุขมากกว่าสมัยนี้ก็เป็นได้ทั้งที่สมัยนี้มีความทันสมัยมีเทคโนโลยีมี iPhone มีอะไรสารพัดแต่สมัยก่อนไม่มีนะการที่นานๆเราไปดูหนังดีกับเพื่อนฝูงกับครอบครัวกับอะไรฝูงชนมากมายสนุกสนานแล้วเสียเงินนิดหน่อยกับสมัยนี้เรานั่งดูคนเดียวในบ้านเงียบๆ The message I took from listening to Mr. Chalurm Paditsu and talk was, uh, aside from the fact that he was very sad to see these places go, there's also a need for preserving them. Now, when I say preservation and preserving movie theaters, I don't honestly think we can preserve them all. That would be impossible. But in select cases, throughout Southeast Asia, throughout Thailand and neighboring countries, I believe it would be a prudent thing to do. This is one such case. This movie theater is the Sala Chalam Thani. It's in the Ratanakotsin area of Bangkok. It's made almost completely of wood, and it's nearly 100 years old. About a year ago, I wrote an article for the Bangkok Post in which I posited that if this theater were brought back to life and movies were shown there again, it could be billed as the oldest operating movie theater in all of Asia. 
That, that's something to be proud of, and that is a tourist attraction in itself. There's the interior of that theater. But on the subject of preservation, in Singapore, it's already underway. In Singapore, a private development firm is investing $30 million in the preservation of the Capitol Cinema. The Capitol was once the flagship of the Shaw Brothers movie, th movie theater chain. However, it's been closed for 20 years. But the fact that a private development firm is putting up $30 million to bring it back to life says something about the values of these places. Again, I wrote an article last year for the Bangkok Post trying to encourage Thai developers and Thai, the Thai government to start thinking the same way about your own underused theaters. In Burma, poor Burma, they're doing it. In Burma, the Yangon Heritage Trust is currently writing up a master plan for the preservation of the Wazia Cinema. They're going to use the cinema as the primary venue for the annual Watan Film Festival. And there's the key. These are special venues. They should be used for special events. Film festivals, movie premieres, you know, historic films, concerts, TED Talks. In Bangkok, the Scala Theater, the last active movie palace in all of Southeast Asia. There are people who want to see it torn down, which is Ridiculous. About a month ago, I was at the Scala, and I saw the first ever silent film festival there, one, fi one film in it. The theater was packed. It was alive. And I was thinking to myself, how could anybody dare to try and want to tear this theater down? This is a cultural resource. And lastly, right here in Chiang Mai, we have our own piece of cinema history. In fact, it's right down the street. It's not 200 meters away. That is the uh, Sanktawan Cinema. But you'd never know it was there because it's shrouded in billboards. That's what it looks like 25 years ago without billboards. It's got a beautiful tile mosaic featuring uh, the history of Lana. This talk is about creating connections, right? Well. I'm arguing that if this theater were brought back to life, we wouldn't just create geographical connections between the historic, a historic movie theater and the four and five star hotels which surround it, or a historic movie theater in the old city. Or, if you go in the other direction, a historic movie theater would connect to historic buildings along Tape Road. We would make social connections between the people of Chiang Mai and visitors to Chiang Mai to a first-class arts and culture venue. And lastly, but not least, we would connect the past with the present. And for a city which prides itself on its history and which sells itself on its history, connecting the past to the present would be a very wise thing to do. Uh, I like to imagine that it could look like this someday, revived. Thank you.